A lot of people don't realize that the extender that you use, whether you're shipping out semen for breeding or whether you're receiving the semen for breeding, plays a big part and can be detrimental whether your breeding takes or not. So stay tuned when I talk about extenders and how they play such a huge role and what you need to know when it comes to shipping out semen. You're not going to miss this episode of British Hacks. All right, guys. What's going on, bully fam? What's going on, Bully Fam? It's your boy, the educator, the scientist, Mr. Double Muscle Line Bulls, bringing you another episode of Breeders Hacks. So we were heading out here. Uh, I was actually checking on a collection that was to be shipped and just doing a little bit of comparison, looking at them under the screens and things like that. And I just figured, you know what? This would be a perfect opportunity to talk about the importance of extenders and the difference and what you need to know and how important it is for your breedings, right? So what extender is, is essentially preservative of the semen. So whether you're shipping out boxes for your breedings or whether you're receiving boxes for your breedings, it's a, a preservative that you need to add to the semen because you can't just ship the semen by itself without any kind of preservative. Otherwise, most likely by the time it gets to the customer, it's, it's going to be dead. The person who's going to be breeding to the dog, the semen will be dead. So now there's different like extenders out there, right? You have more of like your dairy based. You have some that are non-dairy based. Um, the list goes on. So I just wanted to talk about this because people don't realize how important this actually really is, right? And especially when it comes to your breedings, because the last thing that you want, and from someone who's been there and has had experience, I've sent collections and the semen get to the person dead. I mean, this is obviously very early on when I first started, but that's not what you want. You know, you don't want to be embarrassed. You don't want to be sh sending people collections, boxes, and you did everything you thought right. And next thing you know, the collection got their dead. So with extenders, I want to share with you guys like my knowledge. So for example, like with a dairy based, um, some people swear by this. I used to use it. I don't really use it anymore. When I switched my dogs to the non-dairy based and from what my buddy over in Europe explained to me that a non-dairy based extender is actually going to have less contaminants and so on and so forth and give you a higher percentage of successful breedings. So we started to switch over to like something like this, the Hulk extender, and I mean, it's been phenomenal. And that's the other thing that a lot of people don't know. For example, like they'll go with something that they've used traditionally and some extenders don't agree with certain dogs. So for example, you may use this extender and it may not agree with your dog. And when you go ahead and you add the extender to the semen and you ship the collection, the collection doesn't look that great. But then when you go ahead and you switch to a different extender, and I'm just using these as, as an example, it could be any extender. Um, it could even be this one, but whatever. Um, when you use this extender now and switched from this to this, for example, the semen, when you send it to the client, it may look phenomenal. And in my opinion, the greatest extenders right now really are the ready to use extenders. Another thing is like these big bottle extenders, they're really cheap, but you're only supposed to really use them once. So when you do the math, say something like this, for example, is, I don't remember what we paid, maybe like 15 bucks. And then something like this is like 50. The thing is, though, is that you're only getting one use out of this. Where this, I may be able to get like five breedings out of it. So you really have to kind of do your math and calculate. You actually kind of do pretty good with this. So besides the point, with the extenders, like I said, people don't realize that some extenders work great for some dogs and don't work great for others. So when you're shipping out a collection, you want to do your semen evaluations, right? So what I always do with my studs, before I even open them up to the public, what I'll do is I'll take, you know, my extenders and add it. And I may do a few different extenders, right? Uh, I may use this one. I may use this one. I may use the mini tube one and I'll put them all in the box. And then after, you know, 24 to 48 hours periodically, I'll just keep watching and checking and seeing which extender agree with my stud the most. And essentially that is the extender that I run with. Just so coincidentally, I mean, this extender has been agreeing mostly with all my studs. So that's what we majority use. But there is the rare occurrence that, like I said, you could use an extender and it doesn't agree with your stud. So you want to be mindful of that and you want to check. So like I said, the extenders, some of them have antibi antibiotic in them. Some have antibiotic, some don't. So with these extenders, like I said, you just want to do your homework and see what's going to agree best with your dog. So the best advice I could give is, like I said, get you a box, get you a microscope, get you your extender and if it wakes up phenomenal then great use that extender and run with it you know but if it doesn't then you may want to try a different extender it may just be something so simple as the extender also another thing that you have to be thoughtful of 
is that the extender needs to be the same temperature as the semen. So that's why we use a semen warmer to throw out the extender so that then it's, it's the same temperature as the semen. So there's no temperature shock. So another reason why I try to go for a high end extender is because of the simple fact that like this lasts for up to 10 days, right? Um, I've done my own tests. I mean, I've been able to have semen stored in a box for like seven days and still be really, you can get a dog pregnant with it for sure. The other thing is like when you're a breeder and now you're breeding to someone's stud, one of the questions that I ask if I'm breeding to someone else's stud is, hey, what extender are you using? Are you using a very, you know, cheap extender, a more higher end extender? How long have you been using it for? Has the dog been producing puppies with that extender? You know, those are all questions that you want to take into consideration because like I said, I've had people shit me semen. And then when we talk, I'm like, well, you know what? Try a different extender and see if it makes his semen better. And sure enough, when they made the switch, wow, it looked amazing and it looked better. You know, it's not going to always be the solution, but it's one thing that a lot of people don't take into consideration. A lot of people don't even know that certain extenders agree with certain studs, you know? So like I said, one stud, this may agree with him more and he may look, do phenomenal. The other stud, this may agree with him more and this will work with him phenomenal. But like I said, for me, I try to go for also an extender that gives a, a really nice long amount of preser preservation time. Um, I think with an extender like this, the most I got was like maybe, maybe three or four days, something like that. Maybe, yeah, in that ballpark. So the reason why that's a big deal to me and why that matters is because of the simple fact that let's say I ship this box on a weekend, right? And just for whatever reason, it gets held up in customs or it gets held up at the airport for a couple of days. I know for sure that more than likely it will be no good by the time it gets to the person if I use an extender that doesn't last long. If I use an extender that has a longer life span on the semen, um, there's been scenarios where we knew it was a holiday weekend. We weren't going to be able to get the semen to the person. We said, you know what? We're going to ship you the box early. And actually, I know of someone uh, that we shipped a box for, and I believe the semen was good for up to eight days. And the dog still had 10, it was either like 10 or 11 puppies, which was like phenomenal. I mean, what we're talking about, this was this was like, you know, big, big dogs, XLs and stuff like that. But we shipped it with, like I said, the long-term extender. They were able to, what had happened was the dog wasn't really... When they went to the vet, they thought the dog would be ready. The dog wasn't ready. They kept the box and they kept it chilled and they just kept swapping out the ice packs. And next thing you know, by the eighth day, she was ready. They used the box and she got pregnant, you know, and the semen, they said the semen still looked really good. So that matters. You know, if you are shipping semen as a, as a professional, you know, as a breeder, whether it's horses, whether it's dogs, whatever the case may be, the extender matters. You want to do your own test to a degree, to be honest. Anyway, guys, I just figured I'd touch on this real quick. Like I said, ask the people, if you're getting a collection, ask about the extender. Ask those questions. It's really important. Yet again, for keeping and preserving the, the semen, keeping it alive and, and keeping it motile. Do your homework, do your research, and I hope this gives you guys a few things to think about when it comes to extenders, and they actually matter tremendously. In my opinion, don't go cheap on the extender. Get something that's high quality, that's most likely going to agree with your dog. So drop a comment down below. Let us know what extender you use and what agrees with your dogs. Have you tried different extenders? You know, um, in my opinion, the top three extenders right now probably is like, you know, the Hoke. That's what we use, the RTU, um, Mini Tube, and uh, I mean, the Dr. Kenny's. I'm not a fan that it's 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 a dairy based one, but still, I know a lot of old school breeders that use it. And actually, one of my mentors actually went from this to this one. But regardless, test them out. Not every extender is going to agree with your dog. So anyway, as always, guys, I hope this information is helpful. I hope it's useful. And I'll see you guys on the next episode of Breeders Hacks. I right, got.